Imagine being an Uber driver or a passenger in an Uber and not knowing that it's going to be the last time that you use that service because it leads to your death. Today I'm going to be talking about five Uber driver deaths that may make you reconsider using the ride sharing service. Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you don't know what's going on here, don't worry. I don't know what's going on here either. I just wing it most of the time, but I am a horror artist and I like to draw what I talk about in the videos. Now I like anything to do with scary facts, horror stories, true crime, conspiracies, aliens, paranormal, any of that sort of good stuff. And I like to draw. So I combined all of that into these videos to hopefully bring you a unique experience. Now, if you want to support me in any any way shape or form I do have a red bubble store where you can purchase the prints that you see of the drawings I do in these videos and I have an Etsy store where I design felt toy patterns if you are a creative person so you can head across there you can download a pattern and you can follow it step by step and you can create a felt toy of a horror character I've got um, ones from movies I've got ones that I've created myself so you just head across there and knock yourself out I'm trying to add different ones all the time I'm creating new ones. Now with that being said, let's get on with the video and let's get on with the drawing. Uber, the cheap arrival to standard taxi services, has well over 150 million monthly users and is the most popular ride sharing service app. It was set up with safety in mind, but that has been questioned in the recent years with the amount of murders that are happening to their drivers and passengers. Uber is a service where you can become an Uber driver just by signing up and you can earn good money driving people to their destinations. It has also branched out into food delivery with Uber Eats and courier services. Uber operates across roughly 70 countries in the world as well. The company's co-founders Garrett Camp and Travis Kalanick started working on Uber in roughly 2009 and in 2011 Uber app was launched publicly in San Francisco. It's designed for ordinary people to use their own cars as the Uber car to transport people as long as their background checks check out, their car is roadworthy and it's insured and registered. Uber has had its fair share of controversies from avoiding costly regulations that taxi drivers have to go through to safety issues with their drivers and passengers, such as what I'm going to be talking about today. Now, let's get into some of the cases right now. This case that I'm starting off with today happened right here in the location where I live. A Harvey Bay, Queensland man named Scott Andrew Cadbury was murdered after picking up some youths. Around the 6th of February 2023, 47-year-old Scott went to an Uber request and picked up two teenagers, one 17 and the other one 18 years old. These two teens fatally stabbed Scott, robbed him, drove his blue Nissan X-Trail out to a boat ramp near a town called Howard, where they dumped his body, and then drove his X-Trail out to Pacific Haven, where they lit it on fire. Scott had apparently left his Tugum home on the 6th of February, and his friends contacted police when he did not return or hear from him for days, which was out of character. His body was found on that boat ramp a week later. This rocked the community here because Scott was well known in Harvey Bay as an Uber driver and was known as an absolutely beautiful human being that did not deserve this. The 17 year old who can't be named under the Queensland youth law, which is bullshit, I say name and shame, and an 18 year old Ty Wayne Porter were charged with allegedly killing Scott and responsible for the arson and robbery. They were refused bail and they both pleaded guilty of the charges. This case is still currently before the courts. We have a major issue issue with the rise of youth crime here in Harvey Bay and not only here but all over Australia with thefts and murders from teenagers scarily on the rise and our stupid politicians are doing nothing about it and people are actually starting to take matters into their own hands as the court systems just slap these pieces of shit on the wrists and then just send them back out to re-offend. 
I reckon we need to bring in boot camps and instill some discipline into these young idiots that do this and also hold their parents accountable. And we also need tougher punishments. I say let's bring back some medieval punishments and make some examples out of these people. Let me know if you have a rising youth crime issue where you live or is this just a phenomena only happening in Australia right now? On the 25th of March 2024 in South Charleston, Ohio, Lolitha Hall was a 61-year-old Uber driver that was sent to 81-year-old William Brock's house to pick up a package from him, but both of them didn't realise that it was a scam. Prior to Lolitha turning up to William's home, William had been receiving calls from an unknown caller saying that William needed to pay $12,000 to get his nephew out of jail or they were going to kill his nephew if he didn't pay the ransom money. Then the scammer hired Lolitha through the Uber app to go around to William's place and ask for a package that did not exist. Lolitha was unaware of the threats that William was receiving. After Lolitha turned up at William's home, William drew a gun at Lolitha, thinking that she was there to pick up the $12,000. William demanded she reveal the identity of the caller, but Lolitha had no idea what William was talking about and tried to leave, saying that she was going to call the police, but there ended up being a scuffle at Lolitha's car, and William shot her multiple times. William called emergency services on Lolitha, but she died at hospital from her injuries. The police investigated and found that the dash cam from Lolitha's car showed everything and found the scam caller logs on William's phone and the scammer's profile on Uber was deleted and banned. William was charged with murder on the 10th of April, but pleaded not guilty as he thought Lolita was there to harm him and his family. The scammer had apparently started off by saying to William that he was an officer of the court, but then it turned into a hostage situation and ran some demands against William's nephew, and he also threatened William's other family members. William could go to jail for 15 years if convicted. This case unfortunately went on to spark a racial scenario with people saying that William, who was white, shot Lolitha, who was black, and that William probably wouldn't have shot her if she was white. But people can't make that assumption. I'd say he would have had his gun regardless of race because he felt threatened. Do you think that this case was race motivated or just victims of a scammer that would have played out the same result if circumstances were different? Jason Dalton was a 45-year-old man at the time in 2016 from Kalamazoo, Michigan, who was an Uber driver that decided to visit gun stores with a friend on the 20th of February 2016 to purchase a gun and some black clothing. Jason then proceeded to transport Uber customers that evening to their destinations, but these people were all doomed. Jason picked up eight Uber customers and shot all of them, killing six of the eight he transported that evening. Victims were 28-year-old Tiana Carathers, 53-year-old Richard Smith and his 17-year-old son Tyler, 62-year-old Mary Lou Nye, 60-year-old Mary Jo Nye, 74-year-old Dorothy Brown, 68-year-old Barbara Hawthorne, and 14-year-old Abigail coughed. Tiana and Abigail were the only ones to survive. Jason's murderous rampage was allegedly started because of the Uber app. Jason said that when he logged into the app, he saw an Eastern star symbol, which is a pentagram turned upside down like a satanic symbol. And when he tapped on it, it took control over him when the quote unquote devil head popped up. When the app would go into black mode, he thought he could do anything without repercussions. He was like a puppet to the app. If the app was in black mode when he picked up a customer, he would shoot and kill them. But if it was in red mode, he didn't hurt the customer. Jason had apparently not slept the night before either, before he went on his shooting spree. Jason would shoot his victims between each job. 
Jason had no prior mental health history or medication history, so was he just saying this to get a lighter sentence with the whole devil thing with the app? Jason pleaded guilty to each count of first degree murder and eight counts of firearm charges. He was sentenced to life in prison without possible parole. Daniel Pedro Garcia was a 52-year-old El Paso, Texas Uber driver who was described as a hard-working man and really funny. If you were in a bad mood, he would always try to make you laugh and cheer you up. He was also the sole provider for his family. On the 16th of June 2023, Daniel had not been heard from by his wife and she started to get worried. Daniel would start his Uber driving at 7am and would go through to 2pm but after that on the 16th of June his wife called and texted him but nothing, no answer, well into late evening. His wife called hospitals and found out that an Uber driver had been shot and that it was Daniel. Unfortunately, Daniel picked up his last customer at 2 p.m., named Phoebe Copas, who was a 48-year-old woman, and drove down US 54 southbound in south central El Paso, where it was alleged that Phoebe saw a traffic sign that said Juarez, Mexico, and she thought that Daniel was attempting to kidnap her and take her across the border. She panicked grabbed her gun and shot Daniel multiple times in the head. This caused the car to crash into the roadway barrier. Where they had crashed was nowhere near an access road into Mexico. The road where they were was requested to be taken by Phoebe herself so no one knows why she said that Daniel was trying to kidnap her in her police statement. She also took a photo of Daniel after she shot him and sent it to her boyfriend, then called 911. When officers arrived, she was being helped out of the car by her boyfriend and she was still holding the gun. They arrested her and took Daniel to hospital where he was placed on life support, but he was declared brain dead and was taken off life support where he died five days after he was shot. The bullets had destroyed part of his brain and he would have been in a vegetative state for the rest of his life if left on life support. Didi Lopez, Daniel's niece, wanted everyone to know that Daniel was a humble and funny man and the whole family wants justice for what happened. Phoebe was charged with aggravated assault causing serious bodily harm that was upgraded to murder when Daniel died and her bail was set at $1.5 million. She is currently being held in the El Paso County Jail. Apparently El Paso gets a pretty bad rap by people who are outsiders and Phoebe was only visiting her boyfriend from Kentucky. Phoebe could have done so much more than just shooting Daniel. She could have asked questions or pressed the panic button that is apparently in the Uber app to alert authorities. 38-year-old Christina Spacuza was a mother of four and an Uber driver in Pennsylvania where she picked up a wanted felon, 24-year-old Calvin Crew, at around 9pm on the 10th of February 2022. The Uber ride was arranged by Calvin's girlfriend, Tania Mullen, and at the end of the trip, dash cam in Christina's car shows Calvin never getting out. Calvin put a gun to the back of her head and told her to keep driving. Christina responded with, you've got to be joking. She touched the gun and Calvin responded with, it's a gun. Christina then says, come on, I have a family. And Calvin replies with, me too, so drive. Calvin grabs Christina by the ponytail, which made her plead for her life and scream out, I'm begging you, I have four kids, please take that off of me. Calvin then responded with, if you do as I say, everything will be okay. Calvin dumped Christina's phone and dash cam out the window. Two days later, on the 12th of February 2022, at midday, Christina's body was found face down with gunshots to her head and her COVID mask on in a forested area in Munroeville, 
Pennsylvania. Cindy Spacuza, Christina's mother, filed a lawsuit against Uber for the death of her daughter, stating that Calvin should have been blacklisted from using such apps. The app didn't protect Christina from a felon that was dangerous and Calvin should have been verified so his identity was known. Anyone with convicted criminal history that's bad should be sent as a notification to the Uber driver for safety reasons to give them a choice to whether or not they want to pick that person up. Dashcam shows that Calvin was wearing a balaclava to conceal his identity and also shows the gun being pushed to Christina's head. Calvin made several texts to his girlfriend Tania that was under the impression that he was going to be picking up cannabis but after Calvin killed Christina, Tania texts Calvin saying that she was not going to be going to jail if they get caught. Calvin went through Christina's phone looking at her bank apps and making her drive for an hour before shooting her dead. The lawsuit will involve holding Uber accountable for only caring about profits over people. Calvin was arrested several days after killing Christina and in March of 2022 his trial began and prosecutors are seeking the death penalty for Calvin's charge of homicide, robbery and tampering with evidence. So what do you think about these terrifying Uber encounters and deaths? And let me know what you think about these stories in the comment section below and if you've heard of any others. The illustration that I decided to do for the video today was a bit more of a simpler one and trying to sort of get back to my roots of drawing and I did this uh, zombie chick who's basically come out of the morgue who had been an Uber driver and had basically uh, been killed by somebody and they're seeking revenge. They've got a steering wheel in their hand, they've got the keys to the car in their hand, they've got blood all over them and they're just looking for the person they just basically stand there going you know where is this bastard that killed me and because i'm seeking revenge but that is it from me hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you like this kind of content like and subscribe dislike it i really couldn't give two shits what you do because any interaction that you give me goes towards the algorithm for other people to find me and hopefully i will see you guys in the next one bye